Hi, this is Luke Freeman. I'm a horticulture specialist and the owner of Freckled Hen Farm. Today we're in our Yoderbilt greenhouse and I want to talk to you about watering and fertilizing your potted plants. So watering might seem pretty straightforward, but the reality is it's the number one reason why plants die. So I'm going to talk about tips for watering, how to water properly, and then also how to fertilize your potted plants so you're making sure that your plants are getting the nutrients they need. So what happens when plants don't get enough water? This might seem pretty obvious, the plant is gonna wilt, but not only that, the roots aren't able to absorb the nutrients they need from the soil. So it's actually water in the soil that will carry nutrients to the plant roots for that plant to bring up. So in addition to your plants being wilty, if you're not watering enough, it could be that by underwatering your plants, you're actually not allowing them to get the nutrients they need from the soil. But it's also possible to overwater your plants. Plant roots need both water and oxygen. And in the media, there are pore spaces that can either be filled with water or air. And by overwatering your pots, you're filling all those pore spaces with water and you're not allowing air in that media, which your plant roots need to be healthy. And symptoms of overwatering your pots can look a lot like underwatering your pots, so it can be a little deceptive. If you overwater your plants, they can start to wilt or yellow. And at first glance, that might seem like they need more water, but that's not the solution. If you're overwatering your, your pots and your plant roots aren't getting the oxygen they need, your plants are going to start to wilt, possibly yellow. What you need to do is back off on watering, let that media dry out so air can enter that potting mix, and your plant should recover. Now, another way to tell if you need to water or not is what I like to call the finger test. And it's just a matter of sticking your finger in the pot, feeling that media, just sticking your finger down about two inches or so, seeing if it feels moist. If you feel moisture, if you end up with some media on your finger, you know that there's moisture in here for the plant roots to take up. The media doesn't have to be dripping wet. If it just feels like a damp sponge, you're good. And in that case, wait until that media dries out before watering again. What I like to do is water thoroughly, let the media dry out, and then water again. How frequently you water is gonna depend on the type of plant and the size of the pot, but that's a good rule of thumb, is to let that media dry out completely before watering again. So succulents like this aloe vera need very infrequent watering. And with something like this, you're more likely to harm the plant by overwatering than by underwatering it. You wanna let the media completely dry out before you water again. And also, as I mentioned in the, the video on potting mixes, it's important to have a potting mix with sand that lets that media dry out, that has a lot of pore space so that um, the media doesn't hold onto water and it can dry out between watering. Another consideration when it comes to how frequently you water is the size of the pot. Naturally, a smaller pot is going to retain less water than a larger pot. So if you have a plant that you're needing to water multiple times a day, it might be time to pot it up into a larger pot that can hold more media, which will allow you to water less frequently because that pot is holding onto more water. All right, so I wanna take a minute to show you how I like to water our plants. So I have this elephant ear plant here that needs water, it's starting to get a little droopy. I'm feeling the soil, the soil is dry. So, gonna show you how I like to water a potted plant. I like to use a watering wand like this with a nice metal breaker on the end, which provides a good spray pattern. So you can see I watered enough so that there is sitting water at the top of the pot and then water is draining out of the bottom. So that's thoroughly soaking the media. I wanna make sure that there's water throughout the entire soil profile. And then 
It's a good pot with a drainage hole so that excess water is draining away. And so we're just left with the water that the soil is holding on to. And a pot this size for this plant outdoors needs to be watered once a day. Now I want to talk to you about fertilizer. So watering your plants is the most critical aspect of keeping your plants healthy. All plants need water, but eventually you're going to need to fertilize your potted plants. So most commercial potting mixes come with fertilizer already added. So that'll get you about six months without needing to fertilize. But eventually there will come a time when the leaves start to yellow. Maybe you see browning on the tips. Maybe the plant looks stunted. Those are all signs that your plant needs fertilizer. It needs plant food. It's eventually going to just consume all the nutrients that are in the pot already. So there are a lot of different options when it comes to fertilizer. I'm going to show you some conventional fertilizers and organic fertilizers. So starting with the organic fertilizers, here's a granular fertilizer called Job's Organic. This is made for vegetables and tomatoes. It can be used in a pot or you could also add it in a garden. And by granular, what I mean is that the fertilizer has granules. It's dry. This kind of fertilizer would need to be mixed into the, the soil. Um, you could even kind of scratch it into the top of the soil. It essentially somehow will need to be in the soil so that those granulars start to break down and those nutrients become plant available. Now another organic fertilizer you'll find is a liquid fertilizer. Here I have a fish fertilizer that's a liquid formulation. So this kind of fertilizer can actually be mixed in water and then you can water in the fertilizer in your pots. This kind of fertilizer is very easy to apply. Um, it's usually one to two tablespoons of fertilizer per gallon of water and you just water in your pots. One thing to look for when it comes to organic fertilizers, if it's very important to you to use organic inputs for your gardening and for your potted plants in the greenhouse, look for this OMRI label, O-M-R-I, the Organic Materials Review Institute. This will ensure that the product actually is compliant for organic production. It's not necessarily essential if you're a home gardener, but for organic farmers, that label is what they look for to make sure they can use that product. When it comes to conventional fertilizer options, there are a lot out there. I have two here. One is Osmocote. So this is a slow release fertilizer. You can see these, these little fertilizer balls. What you do, you actually apply this to the top of the soil. These fertilizer balls will sit on the surface and then as you water your plant, that water is going to slowly dissolve these fertilizer pellets and those nutrients are then going to be absorbed into the soil and the plant roots can take them up that way. So something like this, you just simply apply it on the surface of the soil like that. Osmocote and other soil release fertilizers like this make it very easy and what you can do after potting up your plant, you can go ahead and apply some of that Osmocote fertilizer to the surface and it's just going to slowly provide nutrients to your plant. So if you have a plant that's in more drastic need of nutrients, you can find a soluble fertilizer. So here's a version of that. It's an all-purpose water-soluble plant food. What it is, it is a salt-based fertilizer that it's going to quickly dissolve in water. And so kind of like this organic fish fertilizer, this one you can mix in a watering can and then water in the fertilizer to your plants. So to show you how that works, I'm going to mix some of this soluble fertilizer into a watering can with water and then fertilize our plants. So in this case, it is one tablespoon per gallon. It's a two gallon watering can, so I'm gonna use two scoops there. Then I'm gonna fill this watering can with water and you know, make sure this fertilizer is dissolved and then water in my plants like I normally would.
So you can see how this Brazilian jasmine needs fertilizer. The leaves are starting to yellow. There are also some brown spots on the leaves, which could be a disease. But overall, that yellowing um, of the leaves, that you know, pale green leaves, is a sign that it needs fertilizer. So I'm gonna go ahead and water it in with this um, soluble fertilizer that I just mixed up. Okay, I just fertilized this Brazilian jasmine plant, and I should start to see a reversal of these nutrient deficiency symptoms within a few days. I'm gonna be looking for these pale green leaves to start to turn a darker green, for this yellowing to go away. Um, there's a little bit of reddening on the leaf margin. I wanna see that disappear. I wanna see some healthy new growth. If I'm not seeing those signs, um, of healthy growth, I might apply a fertilizer again. Do the same thing I did, mixing up that soluble fertilizer in a watering can and applying it to the plant. Once it gets to the point where it looks healthy, it's growing well, the leaves are dark green, then I'm just gonna back down to, to fertilizing about once a week. So with most plants, if they're at the point where they've depleted all the nutrients in their pot, and they're actively growing, you wanna keep them growing and blooming. Fertilizing about once a week with a soluble fertilizer will keep them growing and keep them healthy. One thing I wanna point out when it comes to selecting a fertilizer is the nutrient concentration. So in this organic fish fertilizer, it says 511. That corresponds to nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. In this case, it's 5% nitrogen, 1% phosphorus or phosphate, and 1% potassium or potash. Now this is compared to the conventional soluble plant fertilizer that I showed you. It has 24% nitrogen, 8% phosphorus, and 16% potassium. So it has a much higher nutrient concentration. So when it comes to using organic versus conventional fertilizers, you're gonna need to use a lot less conventional fertilizer compared to an organic fertilizer to get the same amount of nutrients to your plant. And when it comes to selecting a fertilizer, I would look for a fertilizer that has all three of those main macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That nitrogen is going to be most important because that's related to photosynthesis. If a plant doesn't have enough nitrogen, those leaves are going to start to yellow. The phosphorus is also very important in uh, lower amounts. So you don't need as much of that second number, that uh, phosphorus in your fertilizer, but it's still needed for a plant essentially to create energy. And the potassium, that last number, um, again, you don't need as much as nitrogen, but it's very important for healthy roots and for overall plant health. So when you're fertilizing your plants, make sure you have a fertilizer that contains all three. And if it also has micronutrients, that's good as well. But those are going to be the most important nutrients to look for in your fertilizer. All right, so we talked about how to properly water and properly fertilize your potted plants which works for you if you're in a greenhouse or if you just have potted plants on your patio or even potted plants inside. A thing to note with plants inside, they're just gonna need to be watered and fertilized a lot less than plants you have in your greenhouse or plants you have outdoors. So hope this was helpful and happy gardening.